إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له جل عن الشبيه والمثيل والند والنظير وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله نستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Indeed, all praise and thanks is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and may the peace and blessings of Allah jalla wa ala be upon his final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam Many a time when you hear a Friday khutbah or if you're on social media, a lot of the topics that you hear and that you are scrolling through are topics, subjects, which are not necessarily direct, directly attached to you as a Muslim. So there are events going on all over the world and they are made to appear to you in some way or another that that is somehow the most important thing for you to be looking at right now. And because of the interest that it creates, because it's something which may you know, be interesting to look at, even though if you look at it very carefully, it may not have much benefit really to you as a Muslim, but yet still you're scrolling and you're going through from one video to the next, looking for links and so on. But the khutbah on a Friday, lectures that are given, on the one hand, should talk about, yes, as Muslims, what it means to have an attachment and a care for the ummah at large. But everything should always start with rectifying and correcting yourself. Because if you yourself are not corrected, upright, firm, have a good understanding, of Al-Islam, then when you get on to larger topics, which is dealing with the Ummah at large, and maybe you think that you are going to be the change in the entire Ummah, maybe you think that, maybe the video that you are watching, what you are scrolling through, is questioning you, what are you doing for the Ummah? What are you doing for Al-Islam? And then you look at yourself and you think, Maybe I'm not really doing much for Islam. What am I doing for the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And so then you search left and right. But because there's something missing. There's something within yourself you think, I, I can't do that. And so then maybe you begin to lose hope. And then you go in the same cycle again. Another topic comes up. And then you think how I can save the Ummah. And then you look at where can I fit within this. And then you think, maybe I can't fit within this, and then again you lose hope. And this keeps going on like this. Now there are many things that, of course, as Muslims we would like to rectify, we would like to change, we would like to have a positive impact upon. But like anything, like everything, you need to have a starting point. And for us, as Muslims, knowing where that starting point is, is critical means it's everything if you don't know where you're starting then you can't possibly know what direction that you are going in so if you look at the prophets from the very start 
Tell the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from Nuh alayhi salam because as we know in the hadith of Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhum that the people used to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they did this for like 10 generations from Adam alayhi salam until then people fell into idol worship at the time of Nuh alayhi salam and Nuh alayhi salam had problems with his community. And Nuh as we know, called his people back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for how long? 950 years. Not two months, not three months, not a couple of years. 950 years, something beyond our comprehension. We don't even live for 50, 60, 70 years of any comprehension or understanding. 950 years, Nuh is calling his people back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the people that lived on earth at that time, not 7 billion, not 8 billion people. So Nuh wanted to correct his people. They had fallen into idol worship, called, back, called them back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What was the first thing or the thing that Allah ta'ala mentions to us? The type of da'wah that was given to the people of Nuh What did he say to them? Did he start speaking to them about the affairs of the Ummah at the time? How? No, none of that. It was about returning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you as individuals. You as servants and slaves of your Lord, Rabbul Alameen, turn back to Him. And what manner are you going to turn back to Him? Because if you make it right with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as an Abd Allah, as a servant of Allah, if you make it right with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, things become clear. Things will become crystal clear. Because if you're right with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you'll know what direction, you'll know your responsibilities. If you're not right with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're not fulfilling your obligations, you're not fulfilling what is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will start to what? Well, I need to do something. Let me start doing things for the khalq. Let me start doing things for the creation, everybody else. Because you want to feel busy. You want to feel as though you're doing something. You don't want to feel as though you're doing nothing. So therefore, you're looking to do things for all others of the creation, which is right. But not at the expense, not at the expense of you fulfilling your rights to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why the advice that was given to Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu is also narrated by Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu. That the Prophet ﷺ said, Ittaqillaha haythuma kunt. Fear Allah wherever you are. This direct injunction, command, is that you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You give Allah jalla wa ala his right before anything. And then after that, that you follow up a bad deed with a good deed. And that will erase it. That is your relationship to the creation. And then to be, of course, to be good with other people. Be right with yourself and be right with the people. But you start with what? You start with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what Nuh alayhi salam said to his people. Ask for forgiveness from your Lord. For he, for he is the ever forgiven. So if you want to feel as though that you are making progress and that you are useful, that you are doing the right thing, the starting point is that you are right with your Lord. This doesn't mean that you ignore the other matters that I've spoken about earlier, no. But don't put the cart before the horse. You do things in the right order. You get yourself right with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fulfilling the obligations, not just making salah, just a routine, that you offer Jum'ah and your mind is what you're going to be doing after Jum'ah, where you're meeting so-and-so, what you're going to be doing this evening. Of course, there's no guarantee we're even reaching Salat al-Asr in a short while. So the Muslim is always looking to purify themselves, better themselves internally, so that they, when they meet their Lord, which is an ultimate reality for all of us, you will have something. You will have something to put forth to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of the great things, one of the best things that we can do consistently, all the time, doesn't cost you any money, 
It won't stop you from maybe even doing the bits and pieces that you're doing every day. It is the matter of al-istighfar, of seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. And the benefits of forgiveness is what? The benefits of forgiveness is that you recognize that you are in complete need. Anta abdun faqir. Ya ayyuha nas antumul fuqara'u ila Allah. O mankind, you are in complete need of your Lord. You cannot go a moment, an eye, a blinking of an eye throughout the day, except whether you know that or recognize it or accept it, that you wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's permission. Whatever sustenance and provisions that are given to you is only because Allah Jalla wa ala had mercy upon you. You do nothing of your own deeds, of your own strength and power, or whatever you think that you have. This is all by the permission, the grace, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And with that, when we, of course, the, the Abdul Taqi, the God conscious Abd, who is aware of all of this, and in turn makes them what? Makes them seek forgiveness even more because they realize their shortcomings even more. So when the Prophet alayhi salatu salam says, Inni astaghfirullah sab'ina marra fi kulli yawm. I seek Allah's forgiveness more than 70 times a day. The greatest servant that ever existed, Muhammad alayhi salatu salam, seeking Allah jalla wa ala's forgiveness in this manner. <coughs> How are we with respect to that? Then we have, of course, shortcomings compared to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what to be compared. Our salah, we offer it and our minds are somewhere else. We do a good deed and we're expecting something back from somebody else. We're expecting some form of praise. And if somebody doesn't give me something or say something to me, then you may say to yourself, I'm not doing it for you again. Was the deed for them or was it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So we have many shortcomings. And one of the best ways for us to purify ourselves, to better ourselves, in turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is to ask for forgiveness. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves that his servants, that they seek for his forgiveness. That they seek Allah Jalla wa ala's forgiveness because this is you recognizing your need, that you are weak and that you are in need and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone is the one who forgives all sins. The ahadith concerning the blessings the recommendations about you seeking and asking for forgiveness are numerous. The entire Quran is full of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminding us, seek his forgiveness. Ask for the forgiveness of your shortcomings. Turn to him in sincere, in sincere repentance. Tawbat al nasuh Not just any old tawbah, any old repentance, but a sincere repentance. That nobody hears, nobody knows about, just between you and your Lord, maybe when you're driving your car, maybe when you're alone, at any time that you seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. And that in turn, I mean, are you expecting something back? You want to say, oh Allah, I'm seeking your forgiveness. Am I not supposed to receive some barakat, some blessings from you? Am I not supposed to receive this? Am I not supposed to, are you doing a deal of tijar with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like this? Or would it be sufficient? that the sins and the shortcomings you have, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave them, that you met Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with no sin, would that be enough? That would absolutely be enough. Even if you never received another thing in your life, it would be enough that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala erased your sins, that you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with no sin, and that the path to paradise is a very simple one. Because you meet Allah jalla wa ala with a mizan with a scale full of good deeds and the mizan with bad deeds are empty. That your path to paradise has been made easy and has been made very clear. So when you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness, this is what you want for your sin to be removed. And that you will become a sincere servant in that. But this is the theory. This is the, if you want, the theory that we want to achieve and to have in our hearts and want for us to understand. 
Maybe we'll have that feeling, maybe we won't have that feeling. But at times we need to have maybe real life experiences, real life stories to remind us of the best of people, the very best of people, and how they would deal with such a subject. <laughs> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. Praise belongs to Allah and may the peace and blessings of Allah جل وعلا be upon His final messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم is the best example for us to understand the approach we have in asking for forgiveness. The very best. So. The hadith in the Astaghfir Allah fi kulli yawm in sabi'ina marra. Indeed, I ask Allah for forgiveness more than 70 times a day is a practical example for us. The fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us He will forgive all sins. Inna Allah yaghfir ghanooba jami'a. All sins. As long as the person remains sincere. Amr ibn Aas radiallahu anhu. The great companion of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Amr ibn al-As has an amazing story. Time not sufficient for us to go through the whole story. But he lived a life which, if you look at very carefully, you will see how honored he was and how Allah Jalla wa'ala honored him. And in fact, when one wants to narrate a story, None best than the one who lived that particular incident or to talk about themselves. No one better than the one who they are talking about is themselves. No one better. Not third party, second party, no. I lived it. I felt it. They're the best one to tell the story. Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhu, he realizes he's going to die. He's coming to the end of his life and he is in his home. And he's on his bed. He was on the battlefield. He was on his bed, and on his bed, he turns his face to face the wall, away from his children. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn Aas radiallahu anhu, the great companion, his son. He says, oh father, because obviously they can see the situation when somebody is about to leave this dunya. He is surprised about the reaction of his father. That why you are debasing yourself, looking at the wall, not looking at us, why? So Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhu, he said, because he turns around now, and he says, you know my life, I can look at my life in three stages. My life in three parts. And at each part, I know exactly what I can say about each one. He said, the first stage of my life, meaning before I became a Muslim, he said that there was no man on this earth, no individual, who walked upon the earth, who was more hated to me, that I detested more than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if I had died at that time, before accepting Islam, no doubt, I would have been from Ahl al -Nah. I would have been from the people of Hellfire. Absolutely. The second stage of my life, is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala entered Islam into my heart. And I sat there in front of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa and he was accepting the bay'ah, the pledge of allegiance to him. And I placed my hand and then I removed my hand. And so the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Ya Amr, why have you removed your hand? He said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, I have, if you like, a condition to place before I enter into Islam.